And now, on with the show. Imperial Pearl and the Cultured Pearl Association of America presents Pearl Talks. From the Hong Kong Gym Show, Pearl Talks welcomes CEO of Anora Pearl, Joel Schechter, President of Anora Pearl, Ralph Rizzini, President of Imperial Pearl, and the Vice President of the Cultured Pearl Association of America, Peter Bazaar, and CEO and founder of Pearl Paradise, Jeremy Shepard. Hey, we're sitting here at the uh, International Gem Show in Hong Kong. Uh, sitting around the table with some of the heavy hitters from the United States. We got the boys from Honora, the guys from Imperial, and Jeremy from Pearl Paradise. And we're talking pearls because that's what we do. What's going on, guys? How you doing? This is great. That's great to get here. And, uh, I'm exhausted. Yeah. I'm exa- so, I was, I've long never, trip, Joel. I've never. St- I've, I, I, we don't sit down anymore. And we're just. We're, we're always standing at this show. There's so much to say. So it's nice show. when the, the competition can kind of get together as friends and Why show not? everybody that it's one big happy family. Smile for the camera. Except maybe no. for Jeremy. It's no, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> industry. You know what's very very interesting is in the pearl industry we have always been friends. And my father and your father we're pals, were pals for, 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 for fifty for, years. For years and years. Hopefully, me and your son will uh, strike up a relationship and that'll be. A, I'm sure, and we have you know there are new people always coming and in. There's a very good you know? chance my father drove drove you guys someplace in a taxi once. <laughs> <laughs> very good chance. Hey, someone got to do it. So. <laughs> <Excellent. laughs> very, very cute, but it's no, it's true. Where it's it, it's a very family business in the United States. We all know each other, and we share, and we talk, and uh, we share information, and, and uh, here we are today. We all love pearls, and that's what we're here to talk about because what we're seeing here is very amazing. What's going on in the in the pearl industry is that we're always seeing new product, yeah. and uh, uh, we're here. We spent the uh, last few days walking the show, and we thought we'd just give an update to everyone back in America about what we're seeing and and and, and the, the exciting things that are happening in well, pearls. The one thing you're looking at right now is obviously size matters because look at the size of these pearls. I mean, it just blows our mind at how quickly they've come up with these sizes so so fast. I mean, well, here's 15 years of growth. I mean, when we really started this, think about it. We were buying four and a half five was our first large order out of China in about 1995, 1996. So here you are. 15 years later, and they've learned how to grow pearls, okay, that are the size of large South Sea pearls. We've seen pearls here at this show over 25 millimeter, uh, and we're seeing lots of pearls between 12 and 17 millimeter between the coin pearls and these really cool, new, exciting souffle pearls. I, I, still I think what you're not seeing are the small ones as much. Well, I mean, that's, few and far between. Uh, except that I, I've larger. seen some seed pearls here. The price is very tough. And Jeremy, very, yeah, I was just going to say, tough. we've seen some small ones, but what about the prices on those? Well, that's the thing with the small pearls now. Um, the price almost starts high, goes down to a good size, about 7 millimeter, and then goes back up again. Right. So the small pearls are just not as popular. Well, it's a lot of labor, um, and if they leave them in the water, they leave them in the water a year or so, they're going to get a lot larger, they're going to get a lot more. So there's not a lot of, not a lot of reason if you're a pearl farmer to want to leave, to, to want to take out, uh, you know, the, uh, to want to take out the pearls too early. Well, it's kind of like you either take it out early or you leave it in longer because right. you know it's worth more in a small size like this, but it's worth slightly less when you get up to about six to seven millimeters, and then it becomes worth more again. But once it's, they get to those, it's kind of a shame intense. too because there is a beauty to the smaller pearls. There really is. It's it's one of the things that we're seeing more and more that they're becoming so much more difficult to collect. We took this stuff for granted for years. It was oh a, available at a song and a dance sure. and really took and now everybody's panicking because it's we can make some very feminine, very cute, light little airy designs. But they're and hard to find. Lots of great price points. This is gonna fade away very quickly as these is these prices I've seen them literally triple in a couple of years and they keep telling me that you haven't even seen the end of this is not on sale. Especially below four millimeter. Anything Anything below four, this is about uh, four, four, and four and a half, and a half. but the, the pearls between three and four can be twice the price of a yeah. four to five right now. That's, that's, we well, never saw that. How many years ago was it with our first big order where we were trying everything we could to collect six and a half to seven millimeter mm-hmm. pearls? How long did it take us? How hard did we have to go search? How many years ago was that? Well, we, our first large order was six and a half, seven, and it took us like literally an entire year of trying to get everything out of one harvest that we possibly could. We couldn't do it. We had to go into a second harvest before we could run. I know, and that wasn't that long ago. Well, how about the quality, though? You you mentioned that in the 90s, this is what you saw. 
but did they look like a koi? No, it, it, the first pearls that we saw, we were one of the first to bring them back. They came in wooden wash tubs from the government of China when this was before the business had been privatized. And the first lots were this size, but I would say 80% of what we bought, we knew we were throwing away. It was yellow, right. brown, muddy color, and it was literally unusable. And the ones that were nice quality were all little uh, potatoes and uh, and rondelle. Right. So we named them potatoes and corn. <laughs> yes. That's how we started at Honora. That's what those wow. names kind of. It's our first big ad. How corn didn't always, stick here, but, but the name potatoes you always named pearls after food. food. I don't know. Oh, he's food. <laughs> Look at us. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I guess that's a good reason. Another, another common element of the food. We like to eat. Yeah. We like to drink. Yes. Well, well, these nice. pearls look like grapes. Well, how about Jeremy yeah. introducing the uh, the newest uh, That menu. was a perfect segue. The newest yeah, there we go. Um, this go is probably the newest thing that we've seen at the show. Um, souffle pearls is what they're called. They're grafted with some sort of earthen material. It's like a compressed earth. Mm -hmm. And when they're drilled, they're soaked, the earth is removed, and you've got pearls of huge sizes. We've seen them all the way up to, what, 23, 24 millimeters? And they're light. I was just going to say, that's the, the that's best the part about these pearls is, I know it looks like it would be very heavy to wear a necklace like this. These are going to be comfortable. Yeah, and souffle, even you got it on. I have to, kudos to whoever came up with souffle, because that is a perfect, perfect thing. Well, they used to use those heavy mother of pearl bead nucleuses to make these large pearls. Now, once you take out the that weightiness earth, of that nucleus, the pearl's got to be earth. half the weight. <laughs> yeah. And we know how expensive it is to ship these pearls, so that's good. I never thought of that one. We're going to save a lot on air freight. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's, not just, it's not just the weight. I mean, these have got colors that yeah, are... Yeah, what's up with the colors, Jeremy? Those are like crazy metallics Unbelievable. Right there. You know, when we uh, visited... Uh, the uh, pearl farm producing this in Jiangsu, we opened several shells right there at the farm. The colors of those shells, colors, Jeremy, were unbelievable. Unreal. They had purples, uh, greens, roses in the shell. These pearls came out of the shell looking exactly like they look right now. Tell them about no, they're part. down deep in the gonads of the, no, of the shell? No, or they're, no, they're no. Doing them right at the top of the valve. Yeah, right right at the, the very top of the, the valve. Yeah. And about it's, two or three, two or three pearls per valve. So I think the most we pulled out, was maybe six pearls out of one shell. Jeremy, sure, you think they uh, only put like three in there because to try to get them bigger for the size? Or? Well, of course it's going to be for the size, but it's also got to be because these aren't first grafts. I mean, these are these have got to actually be third graft. Third pearls. graft. Yeah. Within some of those shells, we saw mabe fireballs, which meant those shells years ago had fireballs inside of them. They harvested the fireballs. They put that earthen substance inside those pearl sacks. That's how they grew these pearls. And those shells were old too. The shells had to have been around Good 10 years old. And that's a part of that, the luster that you're talking about because those really actually look like they're metallic. They are. They're and one, one of the things that I'm very excited to talk about is that our crew who's filming us now and, and Josh and uh, uh, and Jeremy are telling the story right from the farm. We just so came from that farm. You yeah, are going to get amazing. an opportunity to actually see what we're talking about when this is not with third, fourth, or fifth hand. We no. can actually tell no. you. You can see okay, us what you straight, see is what you get. Taking these pearls straight out of the shell. Only a day ago, yeah. a day ago. And you see yeah. that natural color and oh. that luster, that, that killer. Right out of the shell, no treatment, that's nothing. What Would a lot of like people don't understand is, yes, yeah. so it's, it's <laughs> the <laughs> second I just generation happen to have them. Yeah. Just, I actually Jeremy, happen you to have one of the shells. Pearls. Tell the truth. Mm. I have one of the shells that we opened up <laughs> and some of the pearls that we pulled out of this. Um, Let's do it We got some scissors, possibly. Yeah. I was going to okay. say that you can see that the one common denominator We were planning on opening this later, but... Love and this is Michael over here. Passion, passion Stick passion. your head over by the camera so that Come you can say Michael. hi. Yeah. Come on in, Michael. Yeah. Michael, was Michael, hosted, Michael hosted us uh, at the farms and uh, allowed us to uh, actually experience what it, it's like to make these pearls. So we appreciate it. It's like Christmas yes. morning, huh? Yeah. Christmas morning, that's right. You know what, Christmas morning was actually opening the shells and seeing these things oh come out. Oh my God. Because Tell when you open it. like most freshwater shells and you see the pearls come out, you know, you, once Usually in a while you're excited, but most of the yeah. time you're disappointed. One in a hundred. Well, I always say it's yeah. like a treasure hunt, and and it really is. You yeah. just don't know what you're going to see until you open it up. And and they're getting the sometimes you're disappointed. Ralph, the, color, the, the color that these were when they come out were, oh these, my God, beautiful. Like, like, how many did you ready to wear jewelry? Yeah, absolutely. We're ready to wear jewelry. That's what I look at. Beautiful. Top grade stuff. And how many did you say you liked? Nearly all of them. All of them. Nearly almost all of them, yeah. And it wasn't just because of the shape. Now, some of them were small. Some of them looked more like Keishi pearls. In fact, some of them were Keishi pearls. We found some about one or two millimeters in the shell. Now, there's something about this shell that I Look want you all size. to see. The, the size. size. Just one. Show people. Yeah, that's an old shell. That is an old shell. This oh my is gosh. an old, large shell. Now, we talk about those colors and we talk about the metallic luster. Look at the inside of this shell. Beautiful. Look at this. 
Look at all those colors. This is where the Look pearls were grown. How many years ago? How many years ago? Show those colors. See the purple here, right on the side. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. Somewhere between seven and ten years old. Yeah, I, yeah. I think so. I think I can grab those colors, and, but that's just beautiful like that. Isn't that something? And you know, and that also shows it's that wild. as the older the, the shell gets, the better the skin quality, which is something that which doesn't happen. Which is, which is a beautiful thing, isn't with, it? Other, with other type of uh, mollusks. Take exactly. so. a look at this pearl. Yeah. Look at this pearl, yeah. for example. This was probably My the best pearl. <laughs> Josh pulled this pearl out. This pearl. Compare that with any pearl in the strand. It's Look actually at the nice. metallic uh, nacre the on that. Yeah, you can fantastic. see these are unprocessed, untu literally untouched. Literally, still, they still have they still have the the moisture and the, and the dirt Smell that came hands. out of the mouth. When you're done, maybe we'll okay. put this in the competition too, and we can I, trace I think it I right back to, to that already. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> this one water. belongs to Josh's uh, Josh's girlfriend. I think oh, so. There you go. I think we already talked about that. It's nice. About 12 millimeter. Yeah, about that. Yes, I think about 15 long. Sure. But. Really, there aren't any. You're right. You got some cashew quality pearls there. Little, little cashew pearl. Yeah, there's there. definitely a few cashews Look at this. in there. Nice little, yeah. nice little flake. Yeah. This looks like you, you would think that this is a dyed color, but look at that. It's got gray. Completely and natural. Cool, cool, very cool. Almost a little grayish, grayish green. I can metallic. attest that's a natural color. And I will agree with you. On you that. You didn't have time to dye it. So no, I, no, we didn't. It's like finding a gold. Nugget, and what, what do we know? have? A few stuck right to the. Uh, Shell? Some mabes that have yeah, grown some mabes. Right there's, there. there's a fireball mabe right here. Now, the um, this is what I found interesting was that the cashies were all grown right down here along the edge of the valve. These actually came from an earlier harvest. So, and they can only be done second graft, right? Fireballs, anything nucleated can yeah. only be done second graft. It can't be done first graft. But what this means is this shell has been used and reused and reused again because these had to have been at least third graft. Okay. Which is really which interesting. Is, which is many people. For all you people who worry about the what oysters, are we, doing with the we love our there. oysters. That, we keep them around that for is a one long time. Right there, right? I because I know and most people think that when you pull the pearls out of the mouth, yeah. that's <laughs> growing yeah. better with age than some of us. You know. You know. Yeah. The freshwater is not the only mollusk that's reused. South Seas and Tahitians are but very very few are used as many times that's as they use shells. That's just a beautiful, beautiful shell. shell. Beautiful yeah. shell. And the color is what what struck me as just being. We couldn't believe it when we opened that thing. No, it's, it's amazing. You never know what colors you're going to see. Okay. You never know what. So shapes. I think the bottom line that we want to talk about here yeah. is every time we come to Asia, every time we visit our friends that we've known all our life, they have surprises for us, and that's what makes the cultured pearl business, one of the most interesting businesses out there. Treasure because you're gonna see. It's always we are changing. always able to bring you something new and exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, What do you think it, we're going to see in another five years? I have no idea. Can't wait Just think the last sure. five years. Sure. The fireballs, the larger, souffles, the golden the new <laughs> Larger, larger. Yeah, that's what I think larger. we're going to see. Your <laughs> next stop is going to be looking at golden South Sea pearls. Yeah, and that's going right. to be... What's going right. on? You excited, Jeremy? I'm excited. I'm excited. we got a heck of a yeah. trip coming Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Okay. It's been great so far. And uh, we got the Philippines. Then we're going on to... Japan. Japan. New Zealand for a night. Seeing some of those beautiful Fijian pearls. Yeah, I'm sorry. because Because of the terrible earthquake in Christchurch, we're not able to go to see our friend Roger. And Roger, we wish you all the luck in the world and hope that, that you take that beautiful city and, and fix it back up again. Absolutely. Okay? You're going to Fiji to see a brand new type of pearl yes. that, that is really rocking the pearl world. The Fijian pearls, yeah, Justin okay. Hunter, yes. And Justin, uh, we're looking forward for the, for the crew to go there and, and, and visit with you. And then on to Robert Wan's farm and, and other yes. farms in Tahiti. And it's also the 50th anniversary of the first uh, from in Tahiti, and we're going to be documenting. You know, that's an interesting uh, note because yep. this really hasn't been publicized. But it was 1961 when Xiang Daren started started culturing freshwater pearls in China. His first farm started in 1962. The first pearls were harvested in 1962, 49 years ago. So it's the 50th year for the Tahitians. It's basically the 50th year for the Chinese. You're better to have forward. around than my iPhone. Yeah, man. yeah. You are great. Who Google, Google. Google. Yeah, yeah. I got Jeremy. Sir Google over here. I love yeah. it. I'm traveling with him. I'm so Pearl nice. Google. Okay, yeah. Pearl Google. <laughs> Guru. <laughs> Poodle. I like. Oh, there we go. Poodle. <laughs> I don't know about that though. Okay. Yeah. So. This is a, another pearl talk. Another okay. pearl talk. Okay, we're gonna we're we gonna, gotta, we gotta go back here. to work. We okay. all have just, to go back yeah, to work. Some of us have to go back home and do it. Yeah. Hey, I mean, down, my, it's been my, nice. all my buyers have are, are been looking for me, and uh, you know, I guess they don't Let's need do to do it, care guys. Anymore. Thank you guys so okay, much. Okay, thank you, everybody, thank you. and we'll be looking forward we'll to see you, uh, soon. see you again. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.